I'm a part of Joshua's army, and I love it. Part of Joshua's army. I am a part of Joshua's army. Joshua's Army is a group of people just like you. Pray for CSES and give $10 or more every month to fulfill our mission, Christ-centered education. We have 100 members now, and we are looking for 100 more to join us. By board policy, CSES cannot charge the full cost of the CSES education. 20% of every student's tuition must be subsidized. This year, we're facing many challenges as a Christian school and community. And radical changes are taking place in our country that do not support the family, our faith, nor our children. Here at CSES, we support the family, we support our faith, and we support our children. So we need 100 or more new Joshua Army members to partner with us by committing to just $10 or more a month in sustained giving. That's just the cost of a pizza, or a couple cups of coffee. So how do you join Joshua's Army? It's easy. Just click on the donate button attached to this email. Fill out the needed information and submit. Your information comes directly to me and you will be emailed a tax donation receipt monthly. Plus, I am here to answer any other questions you may have about Joshua's Army. Remember last spring's? Students listening together with regular in-state education? Joining Joshua's Army today can help us continue strong in the days ahead. Your support today determines student success tomorrow.
Joshua's army is a group of people just like you. Pray for CSES and give $10 or more every month to fulfill our mission of Christ-centered education. We have 100 members now, and we are looking for 100 more to join us. By board policy, CSES cannot charge the full cost of a CSES education. 20% of every student's tuition must be subsidized. This year, we're facing many challenges as a Christian school and community, and radical changes are taking place in our country that do not support the family, our faith, nor our children. Here at CSES, we support the family, we support our faith, and we support our children. So we need 100 or more new Joshua Army members to partner with us by committing to just $10 or more a month in sustained giving. That's just the cost of a pizza or a couple cups of coffee. So how do you join Joshua's Army? It's easy. Just click on the donate button attached to the email. Fill out the needed information and submit. Your information comes directly to me and you will be emailed a tax donation receipt monthly. Plus, I am here to answer any other questions you may have about Joshua's Army. Remember last spring, students missed being together with regular in-seat education? Joining Joshua's Army today can help us continue strong in the days ahead. Your support today determines student success tomorrow.
Thanks to you, I'm glad you're here. The only thing better than Super Bowl Sunday is BFBF Grandparents Friday, amen? Yeah. Yeah. My name is Chap my name is Chaplain Chappie, and I am honored to be the CSCS chaplain. And we are blessed to have you here today with no snow. Somebody say amen. No snow. Somebody was praying. How many of you were praying? I know I was praying. It would be a nice, clear day today. Well, I happen to be the grandparent of five children. They're age four to 21. And that's the person next to you and say, he's not old enough to have a 21 year old. Because I'll turn red if you do. I'll turn red if you do. Go ahead. Not red. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you well, by showing you this video. I want to explain to you why God made grandparents. Look at this video. This is my granddaughter. I can give you one cracker. Just one. Just one. And then we have to eat dinner. Okay. All your dinner? You promise? Yeah. Okay, give me a kiss. Now. Okay, let's get a cracker. Now, this that's my youngest granddaughter, Sarah. She is four years old, and I had to call my son up and say, you listen, boy, if my grandbaby asks for a cracker before dinner, if she wants a whole roll up or a box, you give it to my grandbaby. Somebody say amen. That's why God made grandparents, because we know how to treat kids, amen? I think we should just skip the parenting part and go straight to grandparents. It's the best job this side of heaven, and I'm in good company. Listen, we want to find out a little more about you, so I'm going to ask all grandparents to stand, and please remain standing if this statement is true. Grandparents stand. All grandparents stand. Let's give them a round of applause. There are over 200 of you today. I'm going to talk to you about number of grandkids. If you have two or more grandkids, please remain standing. We lost about four people. If you have four or more grandchildren, please remain standing. Ooh, we lost about 10 on that one. If you have six or more, please remain standing. Ooh, we lost another 40 on that one. If you have eight or more, please remain standing. My goodness, what number do I have to use? If you have 10 or more, please remain standing. Whoa, we still got... Let's have the whole question. If you have 12 or more, please remain standing. No. You know what? My question to those standing, do you remember all those birthdays? Because I'm, I'm having a hard time with my five. I probably can remember my birthday. I'm at 12, right? We're going to go to 14. If you have 14 or more, remain standing. Look around the room. We still got them. We still got them. But if you have 16 or more, 16 or more, they're still standing. Should I just go to 100 or what? 18, 18 or more. Okay, I give up. How many do you have, ma'am? 19, would you give her a big round of applause? And ma'am, I must say, you and I, we don't look old enough to have that many grandchildren. God bless you. Sir and ma'am, how many do you have? 19. Ma'am, he says he has 19 and a half of one of them the other. So I would definitely be our winner. Grandparents, would you stand one more time? If you, the only stand, if you came to us from outside of Colorado Springs. Grandparents who came to this event from away from Colorado Springs. Now stand here. Give them a big round of applause. Let's remain standing. I'm going to find out who they came from farthest away. Outside of Colorado Springs, if you came from outside of Colorado, please remain standing. Outside of Colorado, please remain standing. Outside of Colorado. If you came east of the Mississippi, Alaska, or Hawaii, please remain. <laughs> All right? So I will ask you, where'd you come from, ma'am? Texas. Where'd you come from, sir? Chicago, ma'am. Hey, it's warm in Chicago. Yeah, we, we got Chicago beat, yes. Georgia, nice warm place, right? Yes, sir. Oh, cold place. Michigan, welcome. Yes, sir. Missouri, God bless you. In the back. Alaska, yeah. 
I know it was a long bike ride, a drive or flight or whatever. Yes, ma'am. Minnesota, God bless you. In the back, are you standing? South Carolina. All right, did I get everyone in the back? I'm looking. Yoda. Minnesota, God bless you. Still looking. Are we good? Got everybody? Oklahoma, I heard. Anybody else? Wyoming, far, far away. <laughs> far, far away. Highway 25. All right. We give everybody a big round of applause. We're so glad to have you here. At this time, we're going to have some, uh, we're going to just have a little patriotic spirit. Would you stand as our kindergartners lead out, lead, uh, would you stand as our kindergartners come in and lead us in some patriotism? our flag than those cuties in kindergarten. They must have some good-looking grandparents. Amen. Would you remain standing as our fourth graders bring forth our flag and as our eighth grader, Mr. Bram Thompson, leads us in our prayer. Color guards. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God.
Please bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for everything you created. Thank you that we get to have our awesome grandparents here today because they're the reason that we are here and that we get to learn about you and not the lies that the world might tell us but the truth and peace that we can find in you. And please bless this day that we get to have and thank you that we get to have our grandparents. And in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Bram. Now I'd like to introduce you to our fearless leader. He's our CSCS superintendent. He has been superintendent for over 23 years. He's married to Miss Sally for over 50 years. They have four and a half grandchildren who call them Papa and Grandma Muffin because she always has a muffin in her, a blueberry muffin in her hand. I have the honor of calling him Doc. Would you please welcome Dr. Roland Dorenzo? Well, good morning. Good morning. Oh man, turn that down. You blow them right out of here. How are you all doing? What a great crowd. It must be February, right? Well, we didn't have this in November, but we were going to make sure we had it in February. So thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. So I saw Mr. Chappie. Uh, hey, give him a big hand. All right. Push it, boys. There you go. So these are my grandkids. If you're up here, we'd show you a picture of your grandkids. But they're mine, so here's the deal. I learned a few things about being a grandparent. I've only been a grandparent for seven years. I've been married for 50 years this year. 50 years, can you believe that? I learned a couple of things about marriage first. There's a couple rules if you're going to make it to 50 years. Rule number one, the wife is always right. Right? Can I get an amen, ladies? Yes. Rule number two, if you think she's wrong, slap yourself and read rule number one. I've made it 50 years. Those two rules work. Trust me. But I also learned about grandparenting. There's rules about grandparenting. Push it again, fellas. Never ever when you go to a grandchild's house, fall asleep unless you know there are no permanent markers in the house. That could be really bad for you, really bad. All right, go to the next one. All right, let's talk about fashion for a minute. I don't know what it is. When you get older, the men's waistline goes up to their chest. I don't understand that. So I'm, I'm fighting that. Still down here at the waist, okay? Are we good? And ladies, you don't have to try to dress like the Gen Zers. It's okay. I, I like the way you're looking today. So you're my friends. You're my audience. When I talk to the Gen Z and millennials and I use illustrations, they have no clue what I'm saying. Nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to prove it to you. Oh, um, before I do that, let me say this. Fellas, I know that the fashion right now is the shirt tail tucked out, but if it looks like a night shirt and goes down to your knees, it's supposed to be tucked inside the pants, not outside the pants. Are we good? We're good. Okay. This is, these are my people right here. All right, now we're going we're gonna to have a little fun. We're going to prove something here, that you are my crowd. I don't have to worry about my illustrations. We're just going to work through this, okay? And I'm going to give you a gift if you get it right. All right, so I'm going to start on this side. Got to raise your hand. We're going to start here in the far right corner. What's the name of that show? Donna Reed Show, right here. Give that man a gift. The Donna Reed Show. Good job. And he, he just, he had to get it because he knew I was giving a gift. The one right above that, who is that? Jack Benny. All right, Jack Benny. Uh, give it to the guy right here in the black hat. I heard him first. I'm coming to your side now, Chappie. You got some gifts for me? All right. 
The one at the bottom in the middle. Bottom. Ozzy and Harriet. Oh, right over here, Chappie. Whoever you got. Hey, you guys are supposed to raise your hands. Come on now. You're killing me up here. All right. The one right, the one above Ozzy and Harriet. Who is that? Burl Hyde's right here. Right here. You got it first. You did this, and you had your hand up. Way to go. Okay, now, bottom left corner, what does that show on this side? Honeymoon is right down here in front. All right, now, I got two for this one. The top corner, what was the show? I Love Lucy. What is the name of her co-star? Say it again. Vivian Vance? It's Vivian Vance, right? Did I have that right? All right, okay, you can give that to there and then give one right over here. All right, like I said, you are my audience because you get what I'm saying when I use illustrations. Go to the next one, fellow, slide for me. But I want you to hear something. This is from Alexander Sosanichin, the Russian dissident. He knew what he was talking about. The line of separating good and evil passes not through states, not through classes, not even through political parties. Can I get an amen? But right through the human heart and through all human hearts. So I want you to hear something about CSCS this morning. If you change a heart, you change a life. If you change a life, you can change a destiny. That's who we are. That's what we do. But we don't do it. It's the Lord Jesus. Wasn't that great today? The Pledge of Allegiance. How many of you had the Pledge of Allegiance when you were in school? Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Well, we keep doing the Pledge of Allegiance. But above that, we do a pledge to the Christian flag. Because it's not just about patriotism. It's about Christ-centeredness. And then we do a pledge to the Bible. Why? Because that is the truth. We stand on the truth. It doesn't matter what the culture is doing. It matters whether you know the truth or not. That is CSCS. 52 years, and we still stand strong. Because of you. Because of your prayers. Because of your support. Many of you had your children go through this system. Now your grandchildren going through this system. And I've got great news for you. As dark as it gets out there, the brighter the light will burn in here. Amen? Go to the next one. This is for you and me. See, our grandchildren, they got big shoes to fill. Our shoes. Our shoes. We have a legacy. CSCS has a legacy, but so do you, and so do I. That legacy is to make sure that they stand firm on the truth, that they know the truth, and that they, do, they know why they believe what they believe. Because if they know that, no storm can take them down. Nothing can uproot them. Nothing. That's what CSCS is about. Now, Go to the next slide. Let me talk to you about legacy. 1966, most of us were around. Five men and their wives began praying for this school. It wasn't in existence in 1966. They prayed for a year. After a year, they decided, well, why don't we just have a information meeting in Colorado Springs because we believe God wants a Christian school in the city of Colorado Springs. So they sent out a brochure and they invited the city to come in. Guess how many families showed up? One. One family. Now, if that had been me, I'd have said, well, I guess God doesn't want a Christian school. Right? Not those five men. They went back and started praying again. And they prayed four more years. And then in 1971, God birthed CSCS. 
That's our legacy. Those founders founded it on prayer. They made sure that the word of God was going to be central and that the love of Jesus would permeate every heart. For 52 years, that has been the story of CSCS. But the legacy doesn't stop there. In 1971, they needed teachers. And so they invited teachers to come, be part of a brand new school. Ten teachers showed up that year. 161 students came through the doors that year. But guess what? Those ten teachers weren't guaranteed a contract. See, I give contracts out to our faculty today. And we tell them how much they're going to make. Back then, that first year, here's what they were told. If the tuition comes in this month, you get paid. If the tuition comes in only half this month, you get half paid. If the tuition doesn't come in at all, you don't get paid. Guess how many of them left? Zero. All 10 of them said, we're in because we believe in the mission and we believe God will provide. That's the legacy. That's the legacy of this school. Now today we have close to 100 faculty members. And yes, I give them contracts. Can I tell you something about the contract? The contract doesn't mean anything. Because see, they make a covenant vertically before they ever sign anything on a piece of paper. And that covenant is they've been called to Christian education. They have been called to model, to mentor, and to show that Jesus will transform a heart. And if he transforms a heart, he changes a life. And if he changes a life, he can change a destiny. That's your grandchildren. That's what they sit under every single day. I want you to do me a favor. The, the faculty, they're, they're hurting some of the kids back and forth that you're going to see here in a few minutes. But they can hear us. I want you to give them a big praise offering, would you? Here's the good news. There's something going on right now in this country. You know, we talk about the millennials and the Gen Zers. And it's almost, we talk about them in, in almost a derogatory tone. We gotta stop doing that. They are the generation that I believe are going to usher in a revival in this country. Right? It's happening right now. In Kentucky, you hear the news? It made national news. Asbury University, they started a week ago Wednesday. They went to chapel. They have not left that chapel. People are coming from all over the world. Why? All over the world. They can't even get in. They're setting up makeshift chapels. What is happening? Spiritual awakening. Change your heart, change your life, change your destiny. Same is true in a country. We can see it. Why can't we start praying here that CSCS be the catalyst for a revival to break out? Right here in Colorado Springs. They can bring all those Asbury students down here. See, the Holy Spirit's on the move. So don't let... Fox News or CNN or anybody in the media tell you different. God is still on the throne, and he is going to continue to reign supreme. And we're going to continue to stand firm on the truth, which is the word of God, the love of Jesus, and the prayerful hand and watchful eye of God the Father. So God bless you. Thanks for being here. God bless CSCS. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Diane Meter, and I'm the COO here. 
And here at CSCS, our school is built on four pillars that provides the structure for our programs. And of course, the foundation of all those pillars is Jesus Christ alone. He is the center of all that we do. That's important to us. Therefore, we would love to share a taste of what that actually looks like and what our students get to experience every day here at CSCS. Our first pillar is fine arts. At CSCS, we also believe that our students are very talented. Wouldn't you agree, grandparents? They're very talented. And that talent and gifting is something that God has bestowed on them. It's a gift he gives them. We want them to use their time here at CSCS to explore and develop the gifting and always give glory to God while using that gift with gratitude to him. Let me show you an example of this. Christy Lamberton, a senior and a violin player, please share your talent with us. Let's give her a hand as she comes out. Just have one word. Wow, that was amazing. And she's a senior. She's just starting, isn't she? Our next pillar is athletics. I do admit we compete to win, and that's okay. And we are fortunate and blessed over the years that I have been here to see many state championship teams. But that is what makes us unique. Many schools have competed and won state championships. But there is a hidden story here. For us, it's not the competition, it's the heart. Grant Lee, a senior, and a sophomore Andrew Bell, they would like to share with us about their cross-country season and how they could see God working. So why don't you have a seat, guys? And then let me ask you, why don't you give me a highlight of your season, your cross-country season? Um, one of the biggest highlights for me was probably team dinners. So before every race, uh, we would go to someone's house or sometimes a school and just hang out with the team and eat a bunch of food. I had a lot of fun with that because like, I'm always hungry and it's fun <laughs> to hang out with others. So it's probably one of my biggest highlights. All right, Andrew, what about your highlight? Yeah, so um, my favorite highlight was our uh, PRs at Liberty Bell Cross Country Inventational up at Littleton, uh, Denver. 
as for Grant and I, both placed in the top five in the D3 um, heat, and we got uh, PRs of Grant got 16, 31, and fifth place, and I got 16, 19 in third place. So. Oh, let's give him a hand for that. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Grant, tell me what motto your team decided to put on your shoulders, and why was that important to your team? Okay, so we wrote For God's Glory on our shoulders at the state meet. And um, it was actually an idea of one of the sophomores on the team. And he just came in with For God's Glory on his shoulder. And then all of us just followed suit. We were like, that's a great idea. And I think that was really important for us. And we were really enthusiastic to do that because it really helped us um, to remember, like, why we're doing this in the middle of the race. Because sometimes, you know, it gets tough and you need that motivation in the middle of the race. You need to remember why you're doing it. And that really helped us. And also, um, we did it just as an act of like testimony to the other teams and other runners to like show what we stand for and like who we are as a team and as a school. Andrew, did you see some? I, yes, please, yes. To God's glory, that's why, why we do what we do. So, Andrew, tell me, how did God help you give a testimony or your team a testimony to the other schools? Uh, yeah, so when we were at the state meet, our team qualified for the state meet, and there was another team there, uh, the St. Mary's cross-country team, that um, we decided that we were going to meet in the middle of the start line before the race and uh, pray as the teams, us two together, and then we were able to get... I think there was 20 teams racing, and we were able to get 16 or 17 teams to come out and pray before the beginning of the race. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys for sharing your heart with us, and let's give them another hand, and thank you for coming. Next is academics. I mean, we are a school. And academics is the hallmark of what we do. But what, if, what makes it unique here at CSCS is that we hold the Word of God, the Bible, as the foundational textbook. Scripture says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And if we hide God's Word in our hearts, we will not sin against God. That's important. So heart transformation is what makes us unique. Let me show you what I mean. Fourth graders,
you are about to be surrounded. And we're excited about that. We do some singing in the mornings, sometimes in the hallway, sometimes in here. And today we'd like to uh, sing one of those songs for you, but not just for you, with you. So great is thy faithfulness. We're going to sing two verses. As soon as we get you surrounded, we'll start. Our kindergarten and fifth graders in the front. First and second graders right down the middle. Third graders over here. Fourth graders over here. Okay, feel free to join in. Great is thy faithfulness. All right, elementary, here we go. Great is thy faithfulness. <laughs> Don't you just love to hear? That's how what we hear in the hallways first thing in the morning. Isn't that a beautiful thing? So thank you to our elementary, and we appreciate them showing up for us. Our fourth pillar is student life. And as our elementary are heading out and getting back to their classrooms, we want our students not only to know about Christ, but we want them to put it into action. Because that's important. You can't just say it with your mouth. You have to do it with your heart. And I think we need a good, let's, let's say, hi, goodbye. <laughs> they need that. Let's give them another round of applause. So as I was sharing, we want them to know Christ, but we want them to put in action. 
Here we emphasize servant leadership. And we provide opportunities all the way from K to 12 for students to put their faith in action. One way we do that is through our student life. I'd like us to talk to two of our high schoolers, senior Annie Smith and junior Noah Ng. If they would come out to join me on the stage, let's give them a hand. They are co-chairman of the ministry branch of Student Council. Uh, Annie, when will you graduate? Just wondering if you already had counted the days. 98 days, not that I'm counting. I, I think she's been counting. No, uh, you can't start counting because you're just a junior, so it's too, too much. So hang in there. God in you means serving others. What has been your favorite way to serve so far? For me, I've enjoyed helping out our other student council branches, whether that's grilling burgers at tailgates or making props for homecoming. I've just really enjoyed that. And for me, I would say, like you were saying, helping out the other branches of student council and kind of student government and events they put on. But also we do a student-led church service every once in a while and just pouring into the people there and speaking and just seeing a bunch of teenagers worship Christ is one of my favorite things so far. Now that you're a senior and junior, what are you grateful for today because of attending CSCS? I would say the relationships I've created with my teachers and because they've poured into me so much throughout these past four years where now I know how to pour into others effectively and show them the love of Christ. For me, one of the biggest blessings in my life has been the Bible classes that we have in this school. Specifically, apologetics with Commander Thompson is so amazing, and it's helped and reshaped the way I look at my faith. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Let's give him a hand. Appreciate that. As you heard from our superintendent, it is up to us to leave a gift of legacy to these young people so that they have a heart for Christ and live for him no matter what happens in their life. This became especially important to me personally when I started having grandchildren. I do have seven, I guess a half is what we are calling it. In fact, I would love to introduce you to my granddaughter who's attending CSCS this year. You're wondering who is with her. This is my daughter, Laura Martin, who graduated in 2004. If you're good at math, you can kind of figure out her ages, which is kind of scary. Uh, she actually married an alum, Alex Martin, who also graduated from CSES. And this is my 10-year-old granddaughter, Macy Martin. And my heart wants her heart to be the Lord's, and I want her to put value on the things above to respect her God, his word, and to be thankful for her country. So what Macy would like to do for you now is to sing the Star Spangled Banner. So if you would please stand for the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we were so gallantly streaming
Oscar. Ladies and gentlemen, future Dove Award winner, Macy Martin. Her CDs can be purchased from her, her agent, Mr. Chappie, at a very, very convenient price. Would you join me in singing this prayer, God bless America? How many of you know America needs a blessing? Amen. Well, let's sing it as a prayer to the Lord. God bless America, man that I love. Stand beside her and guide her to the township of five above. From the mountain to the prayer to the ocean, what the soul God bless America. Put it up a little louder, please. Thank you. And the God bless you. Please remain standing. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for this day. Lord, I thank you for each of these grandparents and parents and family members who are here today to honor the loved ones in their lives. Lord, I thank you so much for this time that we have to honor you and to spend with our students. Lord, I thank you so much for our time together. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much for coming today. I know that many of you are excited to meet up with your grandchildren or the students that you came to support. Now the question is, how do you find them, right? <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna encourage you, if you go out either of these doors, if you will go to your left, you will find a set of stairs, you will find an elevator if you need that, or you can even walk outside of the sidewalk and you can get to the elementary classrooms. All of our kindergarten through fifth grade students are going to be on the 400 or 500 level. Again, once you go out the doors to your left, you may take the stairs, elevator, or you may walk outside on the sidewalk and you may get up to the four and 500 level, which is where our kindergarten through fifth grade students are. Now, if you only have a middle school student, the middle schoolers should be arriving in about 10 minutes, and they will meet you here in the auditorium, and they will take you to your classes from there. Thank you all again for coming today, and we look forward to seeing you at future sporting events, band and choir concerts, and any other activity that your students are involved in. Thank you so much, and have a good afternoon.